Evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us on this Thursday evening, right before the start of the Brandeis semester. Um, my name is Ari Kramer. I'm the Assistant Director of Study Abroad here at Brandeis, and I'm joined by several panelists, um, alumni of our Brandeis-run Summer Study Abroad programs, as well as Professor Nader Habibi, um, who will be delivering opening remarks to talk about his plans to run Brandeis in Copenhagen this summer. Um, we're excited that you're here to learn more about studying abroad on a Brandeis-run summer study abroad program. Our office in the USDAN Student Center um, supports all Brandeis students who are studying abroad on a wide variety of study abroad opportunities. Um, Brandeis has about 150 approved study abroad programs in about 58 different countries, so there's something for everyone in every discipline. But tonight, um, we are specifically focusing on our Brandeis Run Summer Study Abroad Programs, three special opportunities um, of cohorts of Brandeis students along with Brandeis faculty um, studying abroad specific disciplines in Mexico, Denmark, and Italy for about six weeks over the summer. As I mentioned, Professor Nader Habibi um, is here uh, to welcome everyone and to share a little bit about his experience leading Brandeis in Copenhagen over the summer. Um, he was the faculty director for Brandeis in Copenhagen in summer 2018, and will reprise that role this summer, summer of 2023. So, Professor Habibi, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Good evening, and welcome to uh, this uh, study abroad orientation program. It's really a pleasure for me to join you and uh, share with you um, some of my own experience. Uh, this summer, I'll be going to Copenhagen with a group of uh, students from Brandeis University, and this would be my second time uh, leading and directing the program for Brandeis University. And the first time was in 2017, and I really enjoyed it and um, found it very rewarding. Um, the uh, program, uh, like other programs, study abroad programs that we have, is a combination of uh, classwork, uh, cultural exposure to the host country, a number of trips, and a, a number of guest speakers that we invite depending on the uh, topics of each classroom, so that uh, there is sufficient amount of interaction between students and um, various uh, speakers, experts, and also uh, members of the society in which uh, they would be living, in, in my case, the uh, community of people in the uh, Copenhagen. Um, so, um, although uh, we really emphasize in Brandeis University that the quality of education must always be good, and uh, students who participate would uh, have two classes that uh, they would take regularly with regular hours, but we also try to make this a, an enjoyable experience, a fun experience, and also uh, an, an experience in exposure to uh, other cultures. Now, I think that is very valuable given the uh, modern world in which we live, where it is very uh, multinational, uh, uh, very diverse. So uh, learning about other cultures, being exposed to other cultures, especially an important region like Europe, is a very valuable uh, experience that will benefit the students throughout their lives. Um, our, our, in terms of the um, Copenhagen program itself, which is what I'm most familiar with, I uh, would like to say that uh, uh, the students who take this uh, program uh, would uh, take two classes, uh, and uh, the period of the program is a period of six weeks. And during this period, we have a number of uh, uh, travel activities, um, day trips around Copenhagen, and also longer trips throughout Denmark. And this year, we are uh, hopeful that we can even arrange a visit to northern Germany, which is about uh, three or four hours by bus going from uh, uh, Copenhagen. And we think that would be a uh, valuable 
uh, experience for students as well. Of course, the students who join us uh, on their own, sometimes they, they travel throughout Europe because uh, visiting other European destinations is uh, very easy and convenient from Copenhagen. Some take the train uh, and some fly to other destinations and almost all European destinations are within a two hour flight. Uh, so it's not that far. And we have had the students that go simply over one weekend and uh, come back. Um, the um, program, uh, of course, um, I know that there are many parents here. The summer programs obviously uh, have certain amount of cost involved. Um, and uh, we uh, try to not only, uh, but we try to provide some kind of scholarships to the extent possible in order to address the amount of uh, cost for parents and students. Uh, I would like to say that um, in our Copenhagen program, for example, where uh, students would take eight credits, uh, if you look at the, the cost of this uh, program uh, and compare it to the cost of taking eight credits in a regular semester, you would see that it is uh, very uh, cost beneficial, it is very cost effective. In other words, it's much cheaper to take eight, eight credits coming to this summer program, which also involves a lot of fun, uh, than uh, going through a regular semester to earn uh, eight credits, which is uh, you have to look at half of a semester's tuition and room and board cost and compare it to the cost of uh, the Copenhagen program. But this year we have been very proactive in uh, trying to um, attract some uh, scholarships and provide some scholarships for the students. And I'm happy to say that uh, we have more uh, scholarships this year than before. And to the extent that um, some of these scholarships would easily uh, cover the uh, flight cost, which is not covered by the tuition that you pay for the program. Of course, we'll be happy to uh, talk about this in the Q&A, and I'm sure Ari would also explain more about these issues. But I'm here and I really uh, welcome any questions that you might have the, about the program that I can address uh, both with students and parents. Uh, and um, thank you. Ari? Thank you, Professor Habibi. Um, whether you're interested in Brandeis in Copenhagen this summer with Professor Habibi um, or Brandeis in Siena this summer with Professor Jonathan Unglob in Fine Arts um, or Brandeis in Merida this summer with support from the excellent faculty in Health Science, Society and Policy, um, we're really excited for you to think about this opportunity to study abroad alongside Brandeis faculty and alongside a cohort of other Brandeis students. We're joined by some of those students this evening um, and I would love to ask you guys to introduce yourselves and share a little bit about your um, journey at Brandeis, what you're studying, um, where you're from, and what your study abroad experience was. Yanni, if you want to go first. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Yanni. Um, I'm a senior here at Brandeis, majoring in HSSP. Um, I am on the track and field team, so it's a year-round sport for me. Um, and I knew I really wanted to study abroad, so the summer programs were perfect perfect fit. Um, and I also am really interested in public health. So the Brandeis and Medida program was also the best program for me. Um, I tell everybody in the office, if I could go back again, I would go a million times over. Um, I had an incredible experience there. And I think having that Brandeis cohort of uh, nine girls was really a, a great addition to the program for me. Um, we took two classes all about public health in Merida and in the Yucatan state itself, um, really looking, really having a global lens of what is public health outside of the U.S. I learned a lot and I had the basics from uh, my time at Brandeis, but I also came back with even more knowledge than I thought I could achieve. So um, it really is a great program. And if people are interested in public health or in learning more about Latin America, um, it's a great place to start. Thanks, Yanni. Um, Judiana, would you like to say hello? Sure. 
Hi, my name is Juliana Moyes. I am a senior now. Um, my major is art history and I'm minor in architecture. I was born and raised in Haiti, came here when I was 12. Um, so I understand what it means to not be from America and um, also how to enter a new country and assimilate and kind of um, take all cultures in. And um, I did the Brandeis and Sienna program this past summer, and I had a lot of fun. It was definitely eye-opening. Um, being an art history major, we tend to focus more on the history side and write a lot of papers. So um, we learn about paintings, um, but my focus was more so on the research side. So it was, it was amazing to actually get to see these paintings that we, I've studied over time um, and to see them in person um, and understand textures a lot more and um, kind of have those two worlds collide in a beautiful way. And um, I've never painted before and I had a whole painting class and um, I finished about four paintings um, and I felt like, you know, I can like, I don't know, take more classes. Um, it was definitely um, a great experience overall. I would definitely go again and I would recommend anyone to, you know, branch out. Hi. That's it. Thanks, Juliana. Um, and Anna, can we turn to you to say hi? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, so I'm a sophomore, I'm studying econ and anthropology. And for me, the program was just really great. First, as a way to get ahead in the major, I'm probably gonna graduate at least a semester early. So it's just great like being able to get ahead in two courses. Um, but also it was just really great going to a country and seeing like they already have these like environmental economics perspective there. And so it was really great like getting that experience and that exposure um, and then being able to take like a challenging class so quickly um, was really great. And the, the people you go with are amazing. So it's really fun. Awesome. Um, if anybody has questions for our panelists as we go along, I'm going to start the conversation and ask all of you to talk about your experiences in Merida, Siena, and Copenhagen. Um, but if anybody has questions as we go along, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, you're able to chat them to us, um, and we will happily ask them um, anonymously for you. So the first thing that I wanted to ask all of you is why you did this in the first place. Um, why did you choose to study abroad on a Brandeis Run summer program? Why did you choose the program that you were on? Um, Anna, I can turn right back to you. How did you choose this program? Uh, so I saw that there was this program like specifically for economics and I mean, I'd never been to Denmark or anything like that. So it just seemed like a really great experience and the more I like talked to people in the study abroad office and other students who had gone it seemed like a really great opportunity um and so yeah I also knew I wanted to like go in the summer um try to get ahead that way and so it just all worked out that way. Judiana how did you end up going on Brad Dyson Sienna last summer? Um Brandeis and Siena was on my vision board for about two years. Uh, it was definitely a goal of mine that, um, you know, it, it was a dream sort of. Um, and I think I tackled it, you know, day by day and sort of reached out to professors and see what they thought. And definitely after I chose and declared my major, it became very clear that um, to really understand art is to see it in person. And I knew um, for early art, I knew I wanted to be, you know, in those countries and see them um, and for a, a, a better understanding. And I knew Brenda Ice and Sienna could provide that for me. And yeah, and I, I knew I wanted to do a summer program just so I'm kind of, you know, taking the Brenda Ice classes here, but I can enjoy my summer and kind of have um, a vacation and kind of like, you know, my fun time. So um yeah, I, I knew it was Brandeis and Sienna. I looked it up myself. I also had friends who um, worked with Ari before and I had heard great things. So I sort of trusted the process and um, yeah, I, I don't regret anything. I had a lot of fun. I'm so glad. Yanni, how did you end up on Brandeis and Merida? Well, I didn't think it was possible for me to study abroad at all since I run year round. Um, so my lovely Ashley, 
one of my uh, bosses in the study abroad office, she introduced Brené Semedida to me last November or two Novembers ago. Um, and once I discovered it, there was no other program I looked at. It had everything um, at that moment that I thought I would really enjoy and really want to be a part of. And I was, in fact, right. Um, I don't think any other program could have been as good of a fit as Brené Semedida was. Um, and yeah, I, it was, I knew I wanted to study abroad. I didn't think it was possible, but somehow I found the program for me and I'm so happy that I stuck through it. And I, as Juliana said, trusted the process and it, it worked out. And it's one of the goals of our office and working with all of the Brandeis students that we work with. About 35% of Brandeis's undergraduate student body studies abroad at some point. And there are programs that can work for every major and minor, that can work for athletic schedules, that can work for Jewish high holidays. I mean, anything that you need to fit into your study abroad experience, we're here to help you figure out how to do it. Juliana, I, um, I see you front and center in this picture. So I think I'm gonna turn to you first. Um, can you tell me, I mean, first of all, can you tell everybody what's going on here? Um, and, and how did this compare to classes at Brandeis? Um, how is it different? How is it similar? Right, so this is one of the many museums we've visited in Siena. And the person in the purple shirt is Professor Joe Wardwell. I believe that's how you say his last name. Um, and he teaches painting classes at uh, Brandeis. And I had never taken his classes before, like I explained earlier. So he was a brand new person to me. Um, and his style was uh, very welcoming and friendly. Um, but I had to get used to his pace. He, he teaches very differently in terms of how um, open-minded and free thinking and, um, he's sort of, he's willing to meet you where you are. And that was key for me, especially with the painting course. Um, because I didn't take the classes with him here, um, he, you know, took his time with me, you can say. And um, yeah, this was a day-to-day -day, uh, situation, like every week, if not like three times out of the week, we would go to museums and visit these very famous paintings. Um, we went to Florence, we also went to Venice for the Biennale, um, but this was like a, a class session here. And um, we also had our other professor, our Italian professor uh, next to Joe that you're not seeing, but he was also kind of walking us through uh, the paintings, the styles, uh, the years, the artists, and we were, we had these headphones in that he would talk us uh through as we walked all over the museum and we would take notes. I'm very much like a phone, no, notes on my phone kind of person. Others had their notebooks out and they would do it that way. Um, but yeah, this was like a an hour session, you know, just in a museum walking around. And then we would have our free time where you can wander around and pick out your favorites and maybe talk about it with a friend or you can bring it up in class when we meet um, in our classes. But yeah, this was like a, a meetup, you can say. Um, as far as the classes of there were different from Brandeis, I would say no, because the professors had the same amount of workload. It's just this one, you would do a lot more walking, if anything. Like you weren't just sitting in the classroom um, every day. So that that's what was different is you got to walk and um, I don't know, kind of have some more like a fresh air kind of thing. But uh, the workload, I would say is just the same it was very rigorous you know you gotta stay with the work you gotta understand you gotta take notes you, you um you get tested in the end um yeah it was very rigorous yeah Anna I'm curious about your academic experience in Copenhagen because it's definitely true that you're taking eight credits of Brandeis coursework and you're doing that you know you're doing full semester courses in a six-week period um, so what were some of the ways that your classes in Copenhagen were similar, but also different to classes on campus at Brandeis? Uh, so I think the most similar was the class with Professor Saw, which was micro theory. But obviously the biggest difference was that we were going at a super, super fast pace because it's a three month class in a month or six weeks. But uh, still, it's like very fast paced. But I think like um, 
they're longer classes too but it like professor saw was just very engaging and he always like since it was like a small cohort we were able to like get close to him and you know we had our jokes and so it was like very nice kind of this relationship we were able to form with professor saw um and yeah, it was it was very challenging. Um, and I'd say probably one of my favorite memories of the trip was getting like all of us studying together at the end. Um, and we were definitely studying like basically all of the last weekend because it was gonna be a hard exam. Um, but I think that's just like part of the study abroad experience. Um, and then our other class, uh, I took environmental economics, but I also know they offered behavioral economics when I went. Um, and it was very cool because we were able to visit um, Copen Hill, which is this like um, factory they have that they like make trash into energy. I mean, it's very cool. Uh, and so we got to go there and we got to go to Maersk uh, to hear about how they were implementing like environmental policies into their company. Uh, and so it was cool getting that like hands on uh, experience and that perspective from a Danish professor. Yeah, and it's funny you say hands-on experience because, Yanni, um, one of the requirements for your major, Health Science Society and Policy, is to do a hands-on experience, which Brandeis and Merida counted as. So can you talk about some of the ways that um, your classes in Merida were different from on-campus classes at Brandeis? Absolutely. So I guess I'll start off by saying that, as uh, Anna and Juliana said, um, the academic rigor is the same. Uh, it is eight credits versus 16, um, which I normally take when I'm on campus, but it still really requires you to think, to take notes, to be present, to kind of um, open up your mind and see this other perspective that you wouldn't necessarily get as much of it as if you were on campus. Um, I had two professors for my two classes, and they each had their own perspective on what public health is. One was a doctor from uh, Mexico City and one had a biomedical background. So it was really interesting to sort of understand what public health looks like out of the US, but all outside of the US, but also um, how they view it from their perspective um, careers. So that was the class side and it was a lot of presentations. It was a lot of um, kind of on your own policy briefs and papers and things like that, it was really nice because you kind of could make your own uh, path on topics that you were interested in exploring further. I'm a big advocate on mental health, so I did my policy brief on the lack of mental health services in Mexico um, and things like that, and it was really nice to kind of have it uh, be personal in that sense. Um, in terms of hands-on, we did different health visits, um, which I think was a really, really nice addition to the classes because I don't necessarily have that much exposure here on campus. So we were able to go to a sleep lab. We were able to go to an HIV clinic um, and then also a, I call it an oasis, um, even though it is sad because it um, is a place where terminate terminally ill can uh, cancer patients go and kind of spend their last days um, there. But the owner, who um, created it. He himself had cancer for, I believe, 25 years and all of a sudden was cured. Um, and uh, it was just really a really powerful place, a really powerful moment um, and an experience that I will never forget. Um, it was really, it was just really, I don't have words for it, um, but those they really were nice additions. Those, those health visits were really nice additions to what we were learning. Um, and really just to see uh, the different parts of what makes public health what it is um, and all the different angles that we really can use um, to help others and for others to help us understand more. Ari, may I ask our students a question? Of course. Thank you. So, um, any of you who would like to answer, what I noticed when I was in Copenhagen with the students was that when they arrived, very few of them knew each other, but by the end of the program, they had developed these bonds and friendships. And uh, when I saw them back in Brandeis a year later, some of them had still kept those friendships. I was wondering if you can uh, talk about your experience in terms of interaction with other students and whether you found any friends 
based on attending this program. Anyone who likes to answer, go ahead, Jan. Sure. Um, well, I had the opportunity to room with one of my current on-campus roommates. Um, we were the only pair in the program in our homestay. So it was really nice to have a familiar face. And I always say we were kind of uh, one Spanish person in two people <laughs> because I at times could understand more from our host parents um, than she could, but she could respond better than I could. Um, so we kind of helped each other out in that sense. Um, and it was, you know, it was nice to always have a friend around. But um, my program had nine girls. We were all super close. We pretty much did everything together. Um, and even if it wasn't a, as a group, people would kind of pair off or be in groups of three and do things. So I'm still friends with all of them. I still talk to everybody, um, whether they've graduated early or whether they're a year younger or things like that. Um, it was really a great group of girls. Um, and we always looked up for each other. We always made sure everybody was okay um, and adjusting and just wanting to hang out. Um, so I think that's one of the really nice things about the Brandeis led programs is you really have that Brandeis bubble, even when you're not on campus. Um, so if that's something that people are kind of looking for, it's definitely a great program to do that. Anna, Juliana, do either of you have thoughts on the experience of studying abroad with people who you now see back on campus all the time? Yeah, it's definitely such a surreal moment. I've had an interesting journey at Brandeis in general in terms of being a student of color. Um, I came here under a scholarship program and um, I sort of stuck to that scholarship group um, throughout my Brandeis journey. Um, and it was mostly students of color. So I, how do I, I knew coming or being part of the study abroad trip, I knew that I would stand out and I knew I would have to, um, be comfortable being uncomfortable, I hope that makes sense. And um, being at Brandeis, I've learned how to, um, you know, make friends with others outside of my normal friend group. I don't know how I'm breaking this down, but I hope it's making sense. Um, so I think for me too, being a senior, um, most of the students were sophomores and juniors. And uh, a lot of them were part of the studio art. Um, side of, you know, things. And so I was the only art historian um, student, and I didn't know any of them. And I had to learn to adjust and to remain friendly. Um, and it took some time. Um, it took some time for me to get comfortable. But I think what was interesting was that no matter what, we were sort of going through similar journeys in terms of a new space, a new area. Um, a culture that we're trying to, you know, have fun in. Um, and so we were definitely like outsiders coming in. And so we could relate on that. And I think when it came to like the day to day, having to walk to class every day, and it's not your normal, you know, going up the hill at Brandeis to get to, you know, um, Mendel, it's a longer walk. And so we could relate on small things like that. We're just like, can you believe we have to do this every day? Or um, how hot it is and just like minor things that would just break the ice. And so coming back to campus, I I would see faces and I recognize them right away because they're a part of like my trip and we can like bond on that or remember those moments or say we miss this moment and miss that moment. And come to think of it now, had I not done Brandeis and Siena, I would have passed right by them. Um, but now I take a moment and I, I can stop and I can, you know, wave and I can sit with them and eat. Um, and so those moments I'm thankful for and um, yeah, I'll, I'll carry them with me, you know. They're good people. Uh, yeah, similar to me, I like didn't know practically anyone before I like from the program that I went to. Um, and so it was really, really nice. Like 
the people on my floor became like some of my best friends. We would cook together all the time and um, everyone, would, we would like find things to do everyone together. We'd visit a lot of things in Copenhagen and go swimming in the canals, which was very fun. Um, and so, yeah, it was just like very quick bonding, like as you guys say, like going like through these experiences together and just like having these people to explore this new place is like really fun. And I think in general, like everyone's kind of reaching out to each other to make sure everyone's like having a good time and um, to study together and all those things. So it's nice having that support. And, you know, now I have like weekly lunches with my friends from Copenhagen. So it's it's really fun. Anna, I didn't know you guys did that. That's awesome. Um, Yanni, I am curious to hear from you as you're now a senior in the major, um, how you have kept in touch um, or maintained a relationship with um, Professor Kerry, who was in Mexico with you over the summer. Yeah, well, uh, actually, Professor Kiri is my faculty advisor for the major, so I just emailed her about writing me a letter of rec to grad school, so <laughs> I'm always in her email, um, but she is an incredible professor. I took her uh, special topics in public health class um, my sophomore year. It's one of my favorite classes. She's incredibly intelligent, um, and she's just, she's so funny. She's so funny, and it was really nice for her and Professor uh, Gonzalez Ross, who's my Spanish teacher, um, my freshman year to come and spend a few days with us. This was at a restaurant called Catherine in um, Centro. And this is my roommate actually there and here on campus, um, Nina. And they tried crickets together and they took it like champs. Um, but it was really nice to see a familiar face um, that I see here on campus in more of a academic setting um, and then really being able to kind of meet beyond the professor um, really just as a person um, in in a place that was new to me um, so it was really nice um, and I've definitely kept in touch and I hope to continue to keep in touch with her and with uh, Professor Gonzalez Ross as well. Um, Anna uh as you think about the economics coursework that you were participating in um, in Copenhagen, and you've continued on in that study here at Brandeis, how has the coursework abroad um, connected back to your academics here? And I'll just say, before you answer that question, um, if there are folks who would like to chime in and ask questions of our panelists um, as well, please feel free to put those questions in the chat or after Anna's done answering the question. Um, you can also just unmute yourself um, and feel free to ask if you're comfortable that way. Um, so Anna, question about connection to your academic coursework. Uh, so probably the best was the like base that Professor Saul left us with for micro theory, just for all the electives. And like, um, I feel like I learned so, so much with him. Uh, and it you know, it made macro theory, I think, easier for me. It makes it easier for me to like, just for all my classes in econ. Um, it was very challenging, but I think it really paid off, um, you know, now having uh, this ability. And then for the environmental econ, is um, for me, that was just like a really eye-opening class, like seeing this applied in economics. Um, and now it's like very interesting going into my other classes and seeing like, oh, how are these concepts like being left out in like traditional uh, economic theory or how are they being brought back or, oh, how could this play with what we're seeing in, for example, Professor Habibi's class where I was learning about um, like bureaucracy and economic development. And so like kind of putting these things together just brings like a new perspective on what we can do with economics. So it was very cool. They're both very cool courses, and they are the two courses that are being offered on Brandeis and Copenhagen again this summer. Um, so if you're interested in microeconomic theory taught by Professor Habibi or environmental economics taught by faculty from our Danish partner institution, definitely something to check out. Juliana, you talked about being an art historian um, and walking around to museums and seeing some of the paintings that you've seen on you know, presentations in class, but you also talked about not necessarily being a painter and painting for the first time. 
Um, so how has how have those experiences translated back to your academic coursework senior year here at Brandeis? So I'm at the finish line. Um, I've taken congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm very excited. Um, one thing that I definitely walked away with is that I know now that I'm an artist, and I think um, you know early on at Brandeis, most of my professors would tell us that we're artists in our own ways. It's just a matter of figuring out like what lane is yours and kind of, you know, focusing on it. So I think for me now, I'm confident in knowing that I'm able to draw, I'm able to be creative in other spaces. Um, I took architectural like drawing, but that's mostly like, you know, there's more math involved and you kind of just focus on buildings. Um, but this one is like, uh, now I'm, I just draw just for fun. And I think that helps me a lot with um, understanding, understanding, how do I explain? Like with painting specifically, when I took, when I was like learning about foundations and um, textures and darks and lights, it, it just clicks now, like it makes more sense to me when I look at a painting and I'm able to understand maybe how long the artist took to make this piece um, and understand like the process behind it. And that it's not just a one day thing. It's like, a, you know, you have to work through it. And um, I just appreciate, I appreciate artists more now because I understand the work that goes behind it. Not that I did it before, because it's one thing to tell me and it's one thing to go through it and to understand their process through and through. And so I'm grateful for that. And I think, you know, as I go into the work field and I'm hoping I, you know, my lane will be museum work. Um, I think I'm just gonna have a, more of an um, compassion, I think for the pieces that I see and for the artists that will like come through. And I'm hoping that I, I can talk about them in that perspective. So yeah. Thanks, Juliana. Yanni, I, I see you on the right here. Um, this was your classroom in Merida um, and now you're back in the classroom in Waltham on campus. Um, can you talk a little bit about the academics on Brandeis and Merida and how they connected back to your HSSP major here at Brandeis? Yeah, um, I think they're very similar in ways. Um, I think the difference is that we're really honing in on what the U.S. does and what does the rest of the world do um, in terms of public health? How do we look at it and how do we use it? Um, we talked a lot about COVID because that's still a thing. And um, we talked a lot about the big issues specifically in Mexico um, and how sort of their healthcare system combats um, against it and um, sort of what sort of steps are they doing to put them in the right direction. Um, I, I've always considered myself to be kind of a global citizen. I think everybody is. Um, but this program really just sort of emphasized that for me. My parents are from Portugal, so I have had the opportunity to go to that side of uh, the world a lot. But um, I think I really needed to go to Latin America, not not just Latin America, but I needed to kind of branch out and go to other parts of the world um, that are not so necessarily um, personal to me um, or close to me. And I feel like now, even though I'm not from Mexico, I feel like there's a part of me that's always going to be there. And there's a part of Mexico that's always going to be in me. Um, and it's only made me, this program has only made me more interested in public health um, and doing work uh, internationally. Um, and I think I'm also minoring in anthropology and in international global studies. So I think that's also gonna help me. Um, and really the program just solidified it even more that that's the kind of work I wanna do. Um, really being in the field, really uh, having an impact on, on people um, and seeing that impact. Um, and I think with the coursework that I was able to do with the health visits, uh, it's only made me more excited to go to grad school and get a master's in public health and, um, and continue everything that I've learned here and everything that I've learned abroad. Thank you, Yanni. Um, if you're interested in 
studying abroad on one of our Brandeis Run summer study abroad programs, the first step would be to meet with your study abroad advisor in the Office of Study Abroad. Um, and we'll happily talk you through the academics, the residence life, um, studying abroad with Brandeis faculty, and get you set on track ready to study on one of these programs this summer. Admissions to the programs is rolling, um, but the final deadline is March 1st. So now is definitely the time to be thinking about your options, to be thinking about whether one of these programs or one of the many other study abroad options through the Brandeis Office of Study Abroad would be the right one for you. Um, if there are any questions for any of our panelists, um, I'm happy to yield the floor and let somebody else unmute themselves. If, if there's something that somebody's wondering, um, I'll make this the last call. Um, yes, we have a we have a raised hand. Cheryl, are you able to unmute yourself? Yeah, hi. This is actually Elisa, uh, her daughter. Um, oh, nice. um, I'm an HSSP and bio major, um, and I'm thinking of going on uh, in Merida. Um, but I was wondering, uh, what is the homestay thing like? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just for everybody who um, isn't aware and something that wasn't touched on as much during the presentation, um, on Brandeis and Merida, um, all of the students who are on the program live with a homestay family. Um, so it's a part of cultural immersion, it's a part of language immersion, um, it's also they'll, they're feeding you three meals a day. Um, so it's essentially a home away from campus um, and a place to live and have support. Um, while you're also taking your courses. Yanni, I mean, you're obviously the person to answer this question. Can you talk about your homestay experience? Yeah, I will first start off by saying it was fantastic. <laughs> um, it was really, I think, in my opinion, the best way to study abroad. Um, if it's something that you see yourself doing, it's it's a great way to really immerse yourself um, in the country that you're going to be staying for however long. Um, and it really just makes you feel a part of, of the community um, and not that you're just somebody there um, to learn and, and to use the resources and things like that. You really feel a part of, of um, why you're there in the first place, you know, wanting to learn more about whatever topic you're interested in and really giving back in that sense. Um, so I, of course, lived with one of my roommates, my on-campus roommates, so that was a little bit different compared to the other girls in my program. Um, but speaking for on behalf of them, uh, everybody really got along well with um, their host family, uh, whether it was their siblings or their parents or their pets. Um, everybody had a really nice time. And uh, the way that each person is paired uh, with a homestay family um, in on the on the Brennan Semedia program um, is through a, a questionnaire almost. So it's a lot of questions like, do you have dietary restrictions? Um, are you somebody who wants, I don't know, just things that are very uh, personal to you and based off your responses? Uh, if so, who is the study abroad program that uh, is affiliated with the program? Um, does a really nice job of pairing you with a family that you're you're gonna have a really nice time with. Um, but I couldn't, I can't say anything bad about it. Um, it was really a wonderful experience. My my host parents, I still talk to them on WhatsApp, um, and they're always excited to see what my, myself and my roommate Nina are up to, um, and they always want us to come back. So, um, yeah, it was really great. Hello. Elisa, I'm right there with you that it can be kind of a nerve wracking thing to think about, to anticipate. It's kind of scary. Um, and your advisor in the office or myself, whoever, would certainly be happy to talk through that process of, you know, who are the host families that we work with and where are they coming from and how are we making sure that um, where you end up is a place that's safe and comfortable for you. And also it's their home, so a place that's safe and comfortable for them. Okay, thank you so much. Of course. Are there any other questions? Professor Habibi, is there anything else that you wanted to add in as we close out? Uh, yes, I, I like to say that uh, for those who are interested in the Copenhagen program and uh, parents who are here, um, 
throughout this six weeks pro six week program, uh, all the students would have a personal phone, and I have a personal phone, and uh, we, in order to make sure the experience is uh, quite safe and uh, to address all kinds of any kind of safety concerns. Um, we ask the students to be in touch with us, especially with me as the director of the program. If they have any plans to travel around Europe or outside of Copenhagen, we would like them to give us an early notice and let us know where they are going to be. Uh, these are simply for safety measures. And also my phone and my email would be available to parents in case they for any reason need to be in touch with me, I would be available throughout the program um, for any kind of communication uh, with them and with the students. Thank you. When you're studying abroad on a Brandeis Run Study Abroad program, you're remaining a Brandeis student. And of course, our first priority is the health and safety of members of our community who are studying on our programs. Um, and so certainly if you have any questions related to that, you can always direct them to our office, faculty directors, past participants. We're happy to talk through health and safety measures to make sure that you and any loved ones who might be on the programs are um, being kept safe over the course of the program. So. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here this evening. It was wonderful to um, hear from the three of you and Professor Habibi um, about your experiences studying abroad this past summer, about your hopes for the coming summer on Brandeis in Copenhagen. Um, if you are interested in learning more about study abroad at Brandeis, um, our website is brandeis.edu slash abroad. You can also just Google it. Um, we're up on the second floor of the Used In Student Center. Um, for those of you who have travel plans soon to come back to campus, safe travels. We're so excited to see you um, and best of luck with the remainder of the winter break. <laughs>